Next, we have up Dylan Saunders. The title of his presentation is From Griswold to Obergefell, Tracing the Evolution of the Gay Marriage Discourse in the United States Supreme Court. He's pursuing a Master of Arts in Applied Sociology, and his major advisor is Khorus Mahmoudi. Now, on June 26, 2015, thousands of men and women from different gay communities gathered outside of the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. to await the ruling in Obergefell v. Hodges, a case which promised to legalize gay marriage across the entire United States. As we all know, this turned out to be the case. And on that day, gay marriage became a political reality for the first time in all states and territories. When I looked at this case, I was fascinated with it as a social phenomenon. About 20 years prior, Bill Clinton signed the Defense of Marriage Act, which defined legal unions as between one man and one woman. You two took a complete 180 with this case, and now we're here. I wanted to figure out how we got here. And in order to do that, I needed to figure out how our ideas change across history. How we can go from radical ideas on the rights of women during the 1960s to these potent ideas on marriage as a fundamental right available to all in 2015. I reason that our ideas shift, change, evolve, and reference one another in the form of discourse. That I can catch a glimpse into how this discourse changes by conducting careful readings of written documents. For my analysis then, I decided to trace the evolution of the gay marriage discourse within the United States Supreme Court. I selected 10 distinct cases on sex and the family, covering a 50-year time span, beginning with the contraception decision in 1965's Griswold v. Connecticut and ending with 2015's Obergefell v. Hodges. I carefully analyzed the written opinions of the judges, looking at how the, the form of legal reasoning they use, their discourse, changed according to its social context. After conducting my analysis and constructing a vast web of ideas, I was finally able to answer that original question of how we got here. I came to the following three conclusions. One, by 2015, the gay marriage discourse used a highly emotional language that emphasized human dignity, as well as a right to marriage, and not just the benefits of marriage. Two, this discourse evolved alongside a new conceptualization of marriage that was now about love and commitment, rather than just procreation and stability. Three, the increasing presence of gays in the media and pop culture at large helped disseminate this discourse throughout politics and law motivating the majority to the ruling in Obergefell. When you put these three elements together, you get a powerful social cocktail of ideas and beliefs that can motivate individuals to action, push communities toward political organization, and judges to revolutionary rulings. Overall, my research and these conclusions are important and timely additions to our ever-changing and evolving understanding of law and society. They point to the close relationship that the nine esteemed Supreme Court judges share with the social context in which they rule showing how politically powerful ideas and beliefs can manifest in their decisions and ultimately shape the contours of rights, freedoms, and public places. Thank you.